So again, um, this session or today's session is going to be all about Chromebook Classroom hacks. And I'll be your host for the next little while. I'm Carla Kuyper, EBR Instructional Technology Facilitator. My email, if you have any questions about anything in today's webinar, is kkuyper11 at ebrschools.org. And I'm a Google for Education <laughs> certified trainer. This webinar is worth one CLU, so please sign in with your name to receive credit in ERO. This webcast is being recorded, and these slides will be shared with everyone. Feel free to use the chat tools to ask a question live, and if you have a microphone connected, if you would mute it, especially if it becomes noisy, like right now. Let me mute my microphone for just a moment. Okay, so moving onward, you can dial into this webinar using your phone. The information is on the screen, and you can choose an audio option. You can connect with your computer or through a phone call. So if you need that information, just let me know in the chat box, and I will flash that information up on the screen again if you want to call in. Today's resource um, is primarily going to consist of slides, and you can get them at the tiny URL that you see on the screen. So HTTP, tinyurl.com, Chromebook Hacks. And I'll pause for a minute and let you get to a web browser and get a copy of today's slide deck. And, and while you're grabbing today's slide deck, let me, um, let me give you that slide deck link in the chat box. There it is. Okay, hopefully everybody can uh, grab that hyperlink. And then while you're doing that, let me tell you about um, hacks. Because if you thought that today's webinar was about hacking into the Chromebooks and doing things that are not authorized by our technology department, I just wanted to make sure that you understood exactly what I was talking about. Today's webinar will not get you in any trouble. When I say Chromebook hacks, I'm talking more in terms of life hacks. And if you've seen life hacks on social media or vi well videos on YouTube, you may already know that life hacks are simply strategies that greatly enhance a person's productivity and skills in various areas of life. They really make life a lot easier, like eating a popsicle without making a mess. In the Chromebook Classroom, or to carry that idea over to the Chromebook Classroom, I'm talking about strategies that will greatly enhance your comfort level and your teaching efficiency in the Chromebook Classroom. And so to begin to move forward, Chromebook hack, Classroom hack number one, I'm going to mention really briefly, is just to make sure that you're teaching Chromebook care. At the beginning of the school year, we sent out a slide um, show to schools that had a couple of slides in it that really um, 
took students through the basics of Chromebook care, the things that you should do, the things that you should try to emphasize, and then some of the things that you want to stay away from. For example, um, you don't want to use anything hard to touch the screen or to type. Uh, you do want to fully charge devices every day. That's an easy um, win in the Chromebook classroom. Keeping food and drinks away from the Chromebook is an easy um, way to win your Chromebook classroom. And at the bottom of the slide deck, you're going to see that there that the link for the student Chromebook orientation is, uh, is in there. So if you need to review those slides with your students, there's never a bad time to go over Chromebook care, especially as we roll into testing. You'll find that a link to that presentation is available or for any reason you missed um, getting all of those slides. So my next hack for the Chromebook Classroom is to make sure that you add digital citizenship. There's never a bad time to use teachable moments in your classroom in terms of digital citizenship. And we've got some great resources available to you for digital citizenship. There are some toolkits on the digital citizenship site called Common Sense Media. And the link at the bottom of the slide will take you to the Digital Citizenship Toolkit for E-Rate and some other really timely topics like um, fake news, talking with kids about cyberbullying, and also talking with kids about uh, a gender digital life toolkit. The E-Rate Toolkit is the one that you may have seen before because it's been around for years and it's been here to help us fulfill our E-Rate requirements as a school district. And you'll see that the lessons are broken out by K-2, elementary, middle school, and also high school. There are even resources for parents and they will help get parents involved in digital citizenship at your school site. In addition to digital citizenship, there are also resources for, for students. There's a digital passport for kids in grades three to five, a digital compass for kids in middle school, and then a program called Digital Bytes for kids who are in ninth grade and up. And so each hyperlink in today's presentation will take you to the page that will help you either get the mobile app or take you to the activities specific to that grade level. This is the grades three through five website, and it's the digital passport. Students can um, register to get started. And they can play free games and activities that are available. Educators can do logins, or students can do logins as well. And it's all free. And if you'd like to learn even more about online safety and digital citizenship, if that's an issue that's come up in your one-to-one -one Chromebook classroom, we have a Canvas course that's worth two CLUs. It's fully self-paced. And it will take you through the Common Sense Media site and onto some great discussion boards where you can talk with peers about some of the strategies that they are using in their classrooms to manage online safety and digital citizenship. So the link at the bottom of the slide will take you to the Canvas course. And again, it's totally self-paced and it's worth two CLUs. Okay, so for my third Chromebook classroom hack, learn the Chromebook vocabulary and also Chromebook basics. And so let me share some things with you that will help you to do exactly that. So for example, let's start with the vocabulary. In the classroom, it may be difficult initially for students to distinguish between closing up the Chromebook lid versus signing out of the Chromebook versus shutting down the Chromebook. They all mean something different. And initially, you may have students closing the lid when you mean for them to shut down or signing out when you mean for them to shut down or shutting down when all you want them to do is, is, signing, is to sign out. One of the things that you can do to address that is that we have a Chromebook course posted in Canvas and 
me take you over and show you some things. It is filled with modules that will help you learn the basics of the Chromebook, things about the Chrome operating system. So if there are things that as a teacher you would like to know more about or that you would like to learn more about, um, things like logging in, things like logging out, navigation, there are some course modules that are in here that are very helpful. There's also Chrome, Chromebook management information using the Chromebook and a lot more. So everything that you wanted to know about the Chromebook but you, you were afraid to ask. Um, increasing your knowledge of the device itself is a great way to make life a lot easier in the Chromebook one-to-one -one environment. For example, did you know that the, on the Chromebook there are tons and tons of keyboard shortcuts? And in the Chromebook course, there's a whole section um, devoted to just learning about the keyboard um, and touchpad. And this course was put together by Ms. Keisha, Keisha Arsenault. So one of the modules will take you through the keyboard shortcuts. And you can see on the Google support site, there are a lot of different keyboard shortcuts. Some for text editing, some for the system, display settings, web browsing. Some of the ones that students hope you never find out about are Control H. For example, before I visited that page, I didn't know that Control H pulls up the Chromebook browser history. I didn't know that Control J opens the download page so that you can see whatever students are downloading onto the Chromebook. Control 9 takes you to the last tab that's open. So when students are, ha um, are on the Chromebook and they have tons and tons of pages open and they have lots and lots of tabs on their Chromebook and you can't see all of them, hit, just hit Control 9 and it'll take you to the last tab that's open. There are many Chromebook shortcuts and many of them are contained within the Devices 101 Chromebook course. There are also many accessibility features, and this is a really great Chromebook classroom hack for students who may have um, a need for accessibility features. For example, if you hit Alt, Shift, and the letter S on the Chromebook, you can pull these features up. Or you can just go through the settings that are at the bottom right. When you click on your profile at the bottom right or on the student's profile at the bottom right on the Chromebook, you can access the settings or you can use the keyboard shortcut that I've listed above. And one of the things that you can do is turn on high contrast mode for a student who needs high contrast to make the Chromebook more visible. You can enable spoken feedback. It's called Chromevox. There's a screen magnifier on the Chromebook. There's um, a way to enable the on-screen keyboard for a student who may have difficulty with um, navigating the touchpad in the, in the standard Chromebook keyboard. So make sure that you, that you take some time and look at these accessibility features because these might just be the Chromebook hack that a student needs in your classroom. All right, um, I got a Chromebook Classroom hack that's coming through the chat box and some teachers are using Control H and having the students create a PDF of the history. They use it to create a digital exit ticket and um, through Google Classroom where they reflect on what they learned and from each site that they visited. I think that's a great idea. So Control H to pull up your history from the Chromebook and then create a PDF of that document and, um, and that's a great way to, to have the student reflect on the day or even um, maybe even keep track of websites that they're using during a research session or a class project. Did you know, for example, that you could change the Chromebook keyboard language and even pull up special characters? This might be the Chromebook Classroom hack that a student in your class has been waiting for. If you hit the hyperlink at the top of this slide, it'll take you to the Google support page that'll show you step-by-step -step how to choose the keyboard language and how to access special characters. So if you go to your settings and show advanced settings, you can go into the languages section 
and check out the language and input settings. You can choose a different language. There are even different versions of Spanish, for example. Um, you can choose French and many other languages, and there's even a way to shift between languages so that students can shift back and forth between maybe their native language and English. And so this might be the Chromebook Classroom hack that an English language learner has been waiting for you to introduce into your classroom. All right, classroom hack number four, Go Guardian. And there's a lot that I could say about GoGuardian. It's really its own training. But the, the bottom line is that GoGuardian is the district's choice for digital classroom management, especially for our one-to-one. -one. And the website is displayed on the screen, GoGuardian.com. Basically, in a nutshell, GoGuardian allows you to monitor student screens, track web activity, and it also will enroll your students from Google Classroom. So if you're using Google Classroom, you don't even have to create accounts for students or send out enroll um, invitations or invite the students in with a code. You can just enroll them directly from Google Classroom. You also have the option to set up classes in GoGuardian if you would like. And so you can kind of see from the little um, GIF that's running on my screen right now some of the things that you can do with GoGuardian. Of course, I should mention that the best program for classroom monitoring in the digital classroom is, of course, teacher awareness and teacher with itness. But of course, given that we're all human beings, it doesn't hurt to have some digital help with classroom management and classroom monitoring. And so GoGuardian is the choice that the district has made. And you can see just looking at the little video that I have running, you can select student screens, lock devices, monitor what's on student screens. It's really a wonderful program. If you need access to GoGuardian, there are a couple of choices available to you. If you haven't had a training on your campus available or if you haven't been able to make one of the face-to-face -face trainings that have been available on your campus, Go to the website training.goguardian.com and you can even earn a digital badge and a GoGuardian certified teacher certificate. And then we also have a Canvas course available and it's available for one COU. Either way, if you take the self-paced course, it takes less than an hour and you can get proof um, that you can use to then access your account. When you complete either course, place a help desk ticket and include your proof of completion of either the Canvas course or the GoGuardian course. And you can get access to your GoGuardian account that'll allow you to start setting things up for your classroom. And if you have any questions about that at all, feel free to email me or email the, um, the EdTech team and we can talk with you more about gaining access to GoGuardian. Okay, hack number six, digital teaching moves. Okay, um, there's a wonderful article out there called Five Tips for Classroom Management within a one-to-one. -one. And it's got some really helpful information in it. And I won't go through all of the information that's um, contained within the article. There's so much there. But a few of the tips are, I think, really stand out. And one of them is one, two, three Chromebooks on me. When you need students to focus attention, or on the teacher or on the speaker, you can use one, two, three Chromebooks on me. Um, teach it to your students, teach, it, teach them that when they hear that, they know that they should either close the lids or, um, or shut down the Chromebooks or focus their attention on the teacher or on the speaker and that will really help you to gather student focus when they are off kind of browsing or working um, during an independent work period. Another teaching move is 45 degree lids from the same article. Remember, Chromebooks start up in eight seconds. So anytime you need to gather attention, you can either have students put their lids at 45 degrees or even to close the Chromebooks. And so when you need to um, provide direct instruction, directions, or just to gather attention or focus back to your classroom, uh, use a command like 45 degree lids. Another great tip from the article is to use the technology stoplight. For example, in the article, they suggested that red might be no Chromebooks today or no tech. 
which is perfectly okay. Yellow, using technology but lids are closed until directions are given. Or green, um, using the Chromebooks to start class. So the teacher would indicate maybe outside the classroom or at the front of the classroom which um, uh, color is in effect for the day, red, yellow, or green, and that way students would know to either that Chromebooks are closed beginning the class or open to begin the class. Chromebook classroom num hack number five is to check your physical classroom setup. So think about this question. Are students in your classes arranged in an analog or digital setup? Think about telling time. Trying to apply analog strategies to the digital world just doesn't quite work out. They're really two different um, items and they work differently. In the analog classroom and the digital classroom, the analogy also carries here. So for example, a 21st century classroom design is set up for accessibility, mobility, feedback, collaboration, um, and cooperation. And so this um, design or this image from uh, an article in Edutopia describes the 21st century classroom design and even gives some tips on how you might set up your room. So how you can designate places for students to gather for a whole group, for a small group, and then also um, to give you a picture of what the 21st century classroom should look like for um, the one-to-one -one or Chromebooks. Okay, here's the analog classroom setup. This is set up for lecture and for not a whole ton of class discussion. Mainly it's set up for teachers to talk to one student at a time. So this setup severely limits things like student-teacher communication, feedback, monitoring screens in a digital environment, and also student collaboration. So check your classroom physical setup and make sure that you're moving your classroom setup into the 21st century just like you're moving your teaching resources and your teaching strategies. Number six, use resources that increase student-teacher interaction and also um, collaboration. And so a couple of choices that um, I'll throw out there, and I'll even pause for a minute to give you a chance to explore, are Nearpod and also Edpuzzle. And let me pull up um, Nearpod and Edpuzzle, and I'll share those with you. This is Edpuzzle, and the website is edpuzzle.com. And the thing that I really love about Edpuzzle is that it allows you to take any video, and it will let you add assessment questions, comprehension questions, and it's extremely interactive. It saves all of the data when students answer questions about videos that they're um, watching. And as the teacher, you can collect this data in real time and assess students' understanding. Okay, so you can see, we, we won't watch this entire video, but very simple question, primarily designed for students in the lower grades. At this point, this video stops and the students have to interact and answer a question. So this is a digital um, resource, a YouTube video, and we're teaching students to interact with that digital resource in a way that's really going to enhance um, their ability to uh, prepare for well, 21st century careers um, primarily. So teaching them thinking skills and thinking moves that go with digital resources is something that we can't do enough of at this point. So again, this website is Edpuzzle, and I would encourage you to check it out.
And I've put the link in the chat box so that you can visit that site and see if that's something that you need to incorporate into your classroom. The nice part about Edpuzzle is that it integrates with Google Classroom and you can also log in using your Google account. So you don't even have to create a new account, um, a password and a username and figure all that out. And um, if you hit search in Edpuzzle, you'll find that there are tons of examples that teachers have created and shared. So it's an entire community. And you can see some of the channels that you can use to create your own content. You can use YouTube, Khan Academy, Nat Geo, TED, Vimeo, and a whole lot more. Any questions on Edpuzzle? All right, another resource that I'm going to share will be Nearpod. And Nearpod is filled with interactive presentations. And you can see one up on my screen right now. And it actually allows the teacher to take control of the Chromebooks when the students go to the Nearpod website and put in the code that you see at the top left. They get taken into the teacher's presentation or the presentation being displayed on the teacher's computer. And as the teacher goes through the slides and activities, the students get to interact both with the teacher and sometimes even with each other. Nearpod allows you to add um, quizzes, polls, drawing questions, um, interactive websites, and a lot more. So the website is nearpod.com. You can create your own presentations from PowerPoint slides, from PDF documents that you have already, or you can explore Nearpod's vast library of content, and it covers all subjects and a variety of grade levels. Lots of the content is free, which is, I think, the best part of all. There are um, presentations on this site that will allow you to, to pay for something, but I'll be honest, I use most of my content from Nearpod, and most of it is free. All right, I have a comment in the chat box that Edpuzzle is, really takes instructional videos beyond passive consumption and onto interactivity, and I can't agree more. I think that um, moving beyond the passive consumption and moving into interactivity begins to give our, our students a sense of those thinking skills and those thinking moves that, they're, that they need for not only higher education but also for um, careers. Any questions on Nearpod? So classroom hack here is be sure that you're taking advantage of resources that are out there that increase student-teacher interaction. In other words, the Chromebook doesn't have to create a separation between the student and the teacher. You can use the Chromebook in a way that actually increases the amount of feedback and collaboration and interaction between you and your students. And when you do that in a way that's really engaging, then you're hacking the classroom. All right, and if you want more tools that are like Edpuzzle and also like um, Nearpod, if you visit the EBR Technology website and check out our favorite tech integration tools, and this is a wonderful presentation started by Ms. Arsenault, you will find that there's a variety of tools and they're put together in a Google slide format with a table of contents that will take you to exactly what you need. So if you like tools like Edpuzzle and you like things like Nearpod and you want to find out what else is out there, then you can come over and find things like ThingLink, how to engage students with interactive images and videos 
or how about make believe comics or make beliefs comics? Or did you know about Classcraft, which is also a tool that's integrated with Google Classroom? So all of that and more is on the EBER EdTech website under the integration tools, which is linked to the slide deck. So our Chromebook Classroom hack number seven is to, again, use resources that share with Google Classroom. So if you really want to get into hacking Google, um, your Chromebook Classroom and you're comfortable with your Chromebooks, you're comfortable with Chromebook vocabulary, you've got GoGuardian running, you're doing great with everything, now let's hack your classroom by using resources where you don't even have to create classes or student accounts. So just a few resources that work with Google Classroom are New Zealand or New ZLA, Discovery Education, Actively Learn, and Duolingo. In fact, there's a whole website of these that are set up on the um, Google for Education website. And if you hit that hyperlink, it will take you to the page that has a list of all of the different tools that integrate with Google Classroom. I'm going to pause here and let you hit that hyperlink and even visit this site and explore one or more of these websites. The first set are um, websites that connect with the school system, student information system, and then you'll also find interactive teaching tools such as Classcraft which allows um, the teachers to pull their roster from Google Classroom, tools that improve reading, such as New ZLA, coding and STEM. Tinker is a wonderful website that students enjoy and they love learning how to code at the same time. And then if you scroll to the bottom, you'll see a variety of other websites. Now next week's webinar Wednesday is going to be all about tools that integrate with Google Classroom, either directly or that roster sync with Google Classroom. And so I will spend at least 30 minutes next week just talking about some of these tools, some hitting some highlights, and talking about some of the things that you can do. For example, here's CK12, which is a wonderful resource for math, science, and also English. And it all shares directly to Google Classroom. And the nice part about Google is that this is just the beginning. They are always adding more websites and more services to their um, portfolio. So keep checking back on that website and you'll see other, other resources. My final Chromebook Classroom hack for today is to make sure that you have a plan in place for early finishers. Just like in your physical classroom, if you, you wouldn't allow students to wander around the classroom or the school for finishing early, you have to have the same mindset in terms of your digital classroom. It's important to have something planned for those students who finish early. And so a couple of suggestions would be to um, create a HyperDoc or a Google Doc with a list of activities and tasks, resources hyperlinked. Here's an example of one. It's called Nothing to Do. And it gives students, and this is primarily aimed at students in the lower or middle school grades. So there's a resource linked and then a task. Or your Chromebook Classroom hack for early finishers might be just as simple as a set of personalized learning sites for for kids who finish things early and who need a little bit extra. And I've got 10 of my favorite um, personalized learning sites for early finishers. And so you'll see a mix of websites that cover math and also ELA. A couple of my favorites here are um, Prodigy Math, it's free and it's a uh, a site that will allow students to hone their math skills in a really interactive setting. I'll bring this volume down.
So that's Prodigy Math. Um, another one of my favorites here is New ZLA. New ZLA has a fast library of timely articles and text sets that are, many of them are pulled from uh, highly renowned publications and um, news organizations. And they take each article and each article is presented at different Lexile levels. As you can see, you can go start at 500 and go all the way up to 1,230, and you can also access articles in Spanish as well. Each article comes with a writing prompt, a quick write, and also a quiz. So it's one of, it's a favorite on my list. It's one that many teachers use for instruction. It could certainly be set up for students to use um, in an early finisher format. All right, um, in the chat box, um, we've got a comment from Ms. Arsenault having a constructive bell ringer as well as early finisher activities uh, means that it can really uh, help with classroom management. It means that kids are on task from the beginning and to the end. It gives them little time for wandering. I think that plus um, making sure that your lessons are interactive really help to hack the, the Chromebook classroom, definitely. Agree 100%. Okay, so I'm going to pause at this point. What are some of your Chromebook classroom hacks? What are some things that make life easier in the one-to-one -one classrooms that you've observed or that you've had a chance to visit or in your Chromebook classroom? If you have one, would you add it to the chat and share it with the group? All right, we have one just came through, online typing courses are also great. You know, I didn't put anything on here about online typing courses. Ms. Arsenault, would you type maybe one of um, web link in the chat box and share that with the group? There's a bunch of them out there, right? Okay, Nitro Type is one. And let me pull up the link. It's like a typing um, game. Here it comes. And this is it. You'll see it on the screen. So it's kind of a competitive typing game, and that's definitely one that I think students would enjoy. And I'll add that link to the chat. Any other tips? Typing.com, another great one. So definitely many of our students, especially as we roll into testing, um, cannot spend too much time practicing and building up their speed and their confidence in terms of typing. So I'm going to put the link to typing.com in the chat box as well. Ed site. 
And here we go, interactive assignments. So engaging digital and interactive digital practice. And so I add that link to the chat box as well. I think the best part about the Chromebook Classroom or the one-to-one -one environment these days is that there's so many resources that are available. You can um, spend just a little time online and you can begin to find interactive assignments and also even self-paced practice for students. Well, I'm going to encourage you to explore some of the links that we have and definitely add your thoughts or your Chromebook tips to the chat box to share with everyone um, as I begin to kind of wrap this webinar up. So if you want to learn more, so if you've seen some things in this webinar that are interesting to you and you'd like to get some more information, um, definitely continue to subscribe to the spring webinar series. I've got a link for registration. Next week I'm going to be talking just about some of those resources that integrate with Google Classroom and I'll take some time to walk you through each one and maybe point out some that are um, specific to different content areas and give you a chance to learn more about that. So when you register you can um, select the webinar or webinars that you'd like to take part in. You'll see some of the upcoming topics will be um, going paperless, flipping instruction with forms, digital literacy, and so on. If you'd like to learn still more, I want to encourage you to sign up for some self-paced technology integration courses and even to check out some, self, some of the technology integration videos that are in Canvas. When you go into the All Courses link that I have um, attached to the slide deck, you'll be taken to a page that will let you browse through our current course library and you'll see um, a variety of courses. Some of them are content focused, some are tech integration focused, some focus on digital literacy, and we also have a link here to the MAPS um, classroom videos and there are technology integration videos included in the MAPS modules. So just scroll on down through the content videos and they, those are listed by grade level and you will find the educational technology videos as well. So again, next week will be Google Classroom tools that integrate and excite. So I'm going to talk just about some of the tools that are out there that integrate with Google Classroom that focus on ELA, math, virtual field trips, and even interactive formative assessment. So if you can be with me next week, that's next webinar Wednesday. And again, thanks so much for attending today. I'm going to stay around if you have questions or if you have thoughts about the Chromebook Classroom, the one-to-one -one classroom. This webinar is worth one COU and you will receive confirmation from ERO. If you have any questions at all about anything that you've heard today, you can either send me an email at kkuyper11 at ebrschools.org or feel free to come on over to the EBR EdTech website. We've got... Um, a place where you can request integration support. There's a Google form on the page. Just come on over to the EdTech page and then go to support and select the link for integration support. Feel free to fill out the form. Tell us some background information about you, your site, the things that you would like to learn more about your support needs, some of your goals, and then let us know what method of delivery would best meet your needs. Um, work with your, within your PLC, a webinar, one-to-one -one, um, on-site assistance, or maybe you're interested in seeing a certain topic presented at our next conference style event. Just come on over to the EdTech site and fill out the tech integration support request. All right, so like I said, that's it from me. But if you have any questions, feel free to email me or type them in the chat box.